One of the coolest yet most underrated parts about Android is this menu here, the accessibility menu. Chances are you've come across this section within your settings menu at some point, perhaps intentionally or unintentionally, but I thought that it would be fun to create an entire video deep diving into this often disregarded section of the Android settings menu to unpack literally every setting available within it to see if we might be able to uncover some hidden gems. Now I'm gonna be showcasing this process on a Pixel phone given that it offers the most amount of accessibility settings straight out of the box. So just keep that in mind. But with that being said, Let's dive in. So let's start by actually opening our accessibility menu, which we can do by opening up our settings, then by scrolling down and tapping on accessibility. Once in this menu, you'll see at the top here, we have this section called downloaded apps. And as the name suggests, this is a section dedicated to any third party apps that we may have downloaded that offer the option to use accessibility access to perform certain functions. Now this list will grow or decrease depending on the amount of apps you have installed on your phone. So for example, on my Nothing Phone 2, you can see we have a huge range of apps listed here, whereas there's only a few on my Pixel 7 Pro. But one thing to keep in mind is that you usually won't need to come into this menu to grant these settings specifically. Normally the apps themselves will prompt you and direct you into their respective sections if required. Oh, and just one other thing to note is that on recent versions of Android, you might sometimes see this restricted setting pop up for some apps. So to fix this, you just need to come out of the accessibility menu, then into the app section, tap on see all apps and find the one you're looking for. So let's say Nova Launch, for example, then tap the three dot icon up here and tap on allow restricted settings and that'll allow you to grant the app accessibility access. As for what your third party apps are actually using this feature for, that will change depending on the app, but more often than not, the apps themselves will explain exactly what they intend to use the feature for. For example, with Nova Launcher, granting accessibility access simply lets you activate this double tap to lock your screen shortcut. But coming back into our accessibility menu now, and from there, we've got our screen reader section, namely this setting here called TalkBack. And this one is pretty simple with the option enabled. It'll provide audible feedback for anything that's on your screen so that you can use your device without looking at it, which is particularly useful for those with visual impairments. It does take some time to get the hang of using it, but essentially anything that was previously a single tap now requires a double tap and any swiping will now require you to swipe with two fingers. You can also swipe left or right to move between which items will be verbally spoken to you on your screen. And you can also turn the feature off by simply pressing and holding both volume keys if need be. All right, let's now come back and next up in our accessibility settings menu is our display section. First option here is our display size and text settings, which you often see the very first time you're setting up your phone. And I've often seen people using their phone with super huge icons and text all over the place, and they have no clue how it happened or how to change it. Well, if that's you, this menu here is how to fix it. So changing the font size slider here will make any text on your phone either bigger or smaller. And the default option, which is also the one I like setting mine to, is this notch second from the left. And then changing the display size slider will make pretty much everything else, such as icons, buttons, and any sort of graphical options throughout your phone's UI, it'll make all of that stuff either bigger or smaller. Then you've got the option to make all text on your phone bold, and you've also got this high contrast toggle, which will make every bit of text on your phone either white with a black border or black with a white border, depending on the background, just to ensure that it's really easy to read no matter what the background is. Then if we head back and open up this color and motion section, there's actually a few fun settings in here worth playing around with. The first is this color correction setting, which you can use to customize how colors are displayed on your phone, such as making everything black and white, which is essentially like a reader mode, meaning it can help your eyes to focus when reading large sections of text, for example. Then we've got this color inversion setting, which as the name indicates, inverts every single color on your phone's display. And this is particularly useful for when you're in a dimly lit environment and there's an app that you're using that does not support a dark mode. Well, enabling this setting, which by the way, you can set up as a quick settings toggle, but it'll essentially force that app into a dark mode, which is super handy. Then we have this dark theme section, which is just a duplicate of the setting found under our display settings. So I'm gonna skip that as it's pretty self-explanatory. But then below that is this remove animations toggle. This used to be a setting that you had to go into the developer options menu to enable, but now we also have this single 
easy to access toggle to do the same thing here in our accessibility menu. But as the name suggests, enabling it will get rid of any OS animation, which does technically speed up your phone, but it is also super jarring as well. So I can't think of many instances where enabling this toggle is something that I'd recommend, unless perhaps you're using a super budget phone that is really laggy, then in that case, this might help to speed things up ever so slightly. And then finally, we have this setting here called large mouse pointer, which again, as the name suggests, makes the pointer that we see whenever a Bluetooth mouse is connected really, really big. All right, let's hop out of that color and motion section. And below that, we have our extra dim setting. Now, this is a fantastic feature that Google introduced with Android 12, and most Android devices do support it, but not all for some reason. For example, I know all of Xiaomi's latest phones do not, but it essentially makes your screen even darker than what the default brightness slider allows for. And let me tell you, for those moments where you're on your phone late at night, but you don't want your phone screen blaring light into your face, this feature is a lifesaver. You can also place that as a quick settings toggle, which I do on every phone that supports the feature. Then below that, we have this magnification option, which is actually a really cool accessibility setting that allows you to set up a shortcut that will allow you to zoom in on anything that's on your screen. You just enable this toggle, then select which shortcut that you wanna use, which for me, I like to set it to this triple tap screen option. But once you perform your chosen shortcut, as you can see, your screen will magically zoom in so that you can see whatever your finger is hovering over in more detail. You can also change this setting to be either this full screen option, which is what I recommend using, or this part of screen option, which will only show you what you wanna magnify in a little box, though this can sometimes mess up how the keyboard works, hence why I tend not to use that particular mode. There's also this magnify typing option, but enabling or disabling this changed nothing for me, so I'm not really sure what that's intended for. Oh, and just one thing to keep in mind, if you have the magnification shortcut feature turned on with the triple tap screen shortcut selected, it can sometimes make your phone feel a tiny bit slower to react to your touches compared to if the feature was off, but disabling it will of course make everything feel normal once more. Again, just something to keep in mind. All right, jumping out of the magnification menu now, the last option under our display section is this one here called select to speak. This is actually very similar to the talkback option we discussed earlier, but instead of reading out literally everything on the screen, this will only read out selected items. For each item, you have to reactivate the shortcut, then you can select the item that you want read aloud. And once it's read, it'll be turned off, after which point you'll need to activate it again, and so on and so forth. But to be honest, the talkback option can be a bit chaotic at times, so this select to speak option might be the preferred choice out of the two. All right, that's it for our display accessibility options. And so next up, we have our interaction control section, which is where things can get super fun. To start off, we have this option here called accessibility menu. And if we turn this on, this will actually enable a little shortcut to the side here, which when tapped, will open up a bunch of essentially quick settings shortcuts, which is not only useful just for quick access, but it's also particularly handy should any of the hardware elements related to these shortcuts stop working at some point down the road. You can also increase the size of the buttons in this menu if you like by tapping on settings and then by enabling this toggle here. But then if we come back and tap on voice access, this is a cool little feature I showcased in my recent hidden Android features video, which essentially lets you control your phone using just your voice. You just switch this toggle to on, then tap the icon here. And then to see all of the commands available, you just say show all commands. And then you can navigate through this list to see what's available, but you get all the basics like going home or opening apps, even scrolling down or up, which is really neat. But let's turn that off now and head back. And below that is another interesting feature called switch access. Now, as the descriptive text at the top explains, this is a feature that lets you control your phone with a switch that can be externally connected, like a keyboard or a large button. And if we come into the settings section here, you can open up this setup guide, which will show you how to use the feature. And there are actually tons of customizations that you can make to how it works. But one of the coolest options found in this menu is this one here called camera switch settings. Again, I also featured this in that recent hidden Android features video, but with this feature enabled, you can actually control your phone using just facial gestures. 
So you can set it to navigate home or back. You can set it to quickly open your notifications or quick settings panels, or even to scroll forwards or backwards. And whilst it is a really great feature for anyone with speech or motor impairments in particular, it's also a neat little way to level up your phone's functionality as well. All right, let's come out of the switch access settings menu now. And below that we have a shortcut to our vibration and haptics menu, which can also be found under a separate sound and vibration menu on the main page of our settings menu. But as the name suggests, this section just lets you change any supported settings for your phone's vibration and haptics, which on a Pixel phone is pretty extensive, but on my Nothing Phone 2, for example, this menu is pretty limited. All right, underneath that is this timing controls menu. And this actually has some surprisingly interesting options. The first being this touch and hold delay setting, which as the name indicates, allows you to change how long you need to hold down a selection before the long press action is registered. So for example, if I switch this to long and then come home, now when I long press any of my app icons here on the home screen, it'll take a good few seconds to register that long press before the app shortcuts show up. This could be a handy setting to change if your phone's display has some issues and it's maybe registering short clicks as long presses. And if that is the case, then changing this setting should allow you to get around that. Then this next option here is essentially a way to customize how long notifications with actions will show on your screen. So for example, whenever you receive a message with a one-time code, by default, that'll hide itself roughly five seconds after you receive it. But if you're finding that that's not long enough, then you can change this setting to make it show for longer. And then the last option in this menu here is this one called auto click. And this is super handy if you're using a connected mouse to control your phone. And let's say you have some sort of hand injury that makes clicking the mouse difficult. Or even if you're just using a bunged up mouse where the buttons are broken. Well, if you select one of these options, then the mouse will actually auto click for you whenever the cursor stops moving for that amount of time. All right, let's hop out of there. And the last option in this interaction control section is this one here called system controls. Most of these options can be found elsewhere in the settings menu, but starting at the top, we have our system navigation settings, which lets us switch between the default gestural navigation and the old three button navigation if we like. But what's cool is that we also have some additional settings under each. For the gesture navigation option, we can enable this toggle, which will let us swipe in from the corner to activate the Google Assistant, which I reckon should be enabled by default. And you can also increase or decrease the sensitivity of the side back gesture. Then under three button navigation, we have this option to activate this hold home for assistant toggle, which on Pixel phones brings back that beautiful Google Assistant home button animation that I used to be obsessed with. And on other phones, you can also switch which side the back and recent key buttons are on, which is pretty nice. Not sure why they don't let you do this on Pixel phones, but alas, they do not. Anyhow, we also have this one-handed mode option, which was a feature introduced back with Android 12 on Pixel phones, and which is slowly making its way to other Android phones in recent times too. And much like how it works on iOS devices, with this option enabled, you can swipe down on the navigation bar here to pull the top half of the screen down, which makes it easier to reach. And I seriously use this all the time, Although if you don't like that particular implementation, then you can also switch it to show notifications instead, which makes accessing your notification and quick settings panels anywhere on your phone a little easier. Or you can just disable it altogether if you prefer. Underneath that is this option though, which as the name so helpfully describes, lets you end any phone call simply by pressing your power button, which can be seriously useful for ending a call without awkwardly having to locate and find the end call button. And then finally, we have this auto rotate screen toggle. Now this setting can also be found under the display settings menu, but aside from the basic functionality of turning on or off auto rotate, on Pixel phones, you also get the option to enable face detection, which uses the front facing camera to detect the orientation of your head to then assess whether the phone should actually rotate or not. It's pretty cool. Okay, hopping out of the system control section now, and next up we have this caption section. Firstly, if we tap on this live caption option and set this to on, we will then see automatic transcriptions anytime any speech is detected from videos or audio files playing on our device. There's a bunch of customizations you can make under this settings page as well, which I won't go into now. However, I do suggest enabling this live caption in volume control toggle as that will give you a quick way to enable or disable the feature using this button in your volume panel. After that is this currently Pixel exclusive feature called Live Transcribe, which when opened will essentially just show you a live 
updating transcription of any audio picked up by your phone's microphones. And you can even enable this transcription history option, allowing you to then go back and search through your transcriptions if need be. And if you tap this more settings option here and scroll down and open this option here, you can even add any names you like to this list, which will mean your phone will actually vibrate anytime any of those names are spoken, which could be very handy for a video conference call or a meeting, for example, where you wanna make sure that you don't miss someone addressing you. After that is this caption preferences section, which essentially just lets you customize the look of the live captions if you have them enabled. But I'm not too sure why this has its own menu and isn't found under the live caption section itself. Anyhow, from captions, we move to the audio section. And the first option at the top here is called audio description. And with this enabled, anytime you're in an app that supports audio descriptions, you'll hear, as the name suggests, an audio description. But keep in mind, this isn't an audio description for any app, it's only for supported apps like Netflix and the like. Then we've got this Pixel exclusive feature called Sound Amplifier, which is a feature that you can turn on when you've got headphones connected. And as the name suggests, it'll essentially make weak sounds louder without also making powerful sounds too loud at the same time. So it'll actually kind of activate like a pseudo transparency mode, which means you'll be able to hear voices a little clearer through your headphones, which is kind of cool. And it's meant to work for phone media as well, but the app kept crashing whenever I tried to select it. So who knows what's going on there. After that, we have this sound notifications option, which is also only available on Pixel phones right now. And this is a really cool feature that again, when you're wearing headphones, will check for important sounds like smoke alarms or a baby crying, and then notify you so you don't inadvertently ignore them. Then we have this hearing aids option, which actually allows you to pair supported hearing aid devices to your phone. And the below that we have this audio adjustment section, which just gives you a couple of small options for tweaking how the audio is played on your phone. So we have the option to make stereo sounds mono, and we also get this slider that lets us adjust how much audio is coming out of the left or right side respectively. And this could be handy for if you wanna wear one earphone whilst falling asleep, for example. Now you won't miss out on those stereo sounds that otherwise would have come out through the other earphone. And then the very last section in our accessibility menu is our general section. And you know you're getting to the end when something is labeled as general, but in this section, we have just two options. The first is this one called accessibility shortcuts, which gives you the option to set what the default shortcut is for activating any of your enabled accessibility features. So either a two finger swipe up on the navigation bar or just this little button to the side. And if you have the button mode selected, then you also get some customizations down here for how big it is and also for whether you want it to become a little transparent when it's not being used. And if so, how transparent it should become. You can also activate this lock screen option here, which just determines whether you'll be able to use your chosen accessibility feature on the lock screen or not. And then finally, we have this text to speech output option, which basically just lets you customize how any text to speech is handled, including changing the preferred engine if you have other engines installed. And if you tap on this settings icon here and then tap on install voice data, you can actually find your preferred language of choice and change which actual voice is used for the text to speech service. There are also some other settings that you can play around with here if you like, but then back on this page, you also get the option to adjust how fast or slow the speech rate is, as well as increase or decrease the pitch. And I have no clue why they allow for so much flexibility with these sliders here, because if you crank the settings right up, the audio is literally inaudible, but it's also pretty hilarious. So if you want a quick laugh, feel free to try it out. And so there you have it. That is your complete deep dive unpacking Android's entire accessibility menu. And as you can see, there are a number of features neatly tucked away in there that are actually pretty useful. If you enjoyed the video, then a sub to the channel would be greatly appreciated. But that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.